Hello, I'm Emily and I'm an educator at Mohai and this is Collection Connections Objects in Question where we take a quick peek into Seattle history by taking a really close look at one item in our teaching collection to see what it can tell us about the past. Today we're going to be exploring Seattle jazz in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s and these are our objects. We get two today, which is exciting, but first let's have a think. So when I think of Seattle jazz in the 1940s through 60s, I think of so many different things. When I think of Seattle jazz, I think of musician Quincy Jones and singer Ernestine Anderson and the Garfield High School Music Program. And when I think of them, I think of the Central District, which is the neighborhood where those artists grew up and went to school. Um, and I think of the International District, um, which is where the jazz clubs were located that they were performing in and people who go listen to live jazz music. And these were a predominantly black and a predominantly Asian American neighborhoods in Seattle. Um, and so I also think about the housing segregation to, that led to these being majority minority neighborhoods. And when I think of the time period, the 40s through 60s, I think of the big population boom that was going on in Seattle, um, mostly due to wartime industries bringing new workers into the city. I think of the growth of the black population in Seattle at the time because of this as well. And I think of the growing civil rights movement and black freedom struggles. And when I think of jazz music, gosh, there's so many different kinds of jazz music. Um, so it can be fast, it can be slow. Sometimes there's improvisation. Sometimes there's multiple rhythms going on. Um, I think of some of the instruments like brass bands and upright bass and piano and fun vocals. And when I think of jazz, I also think of Louisiana, which is where I grew up and where jazz came from as well. So those are some of the many things that I think about when I think about this very big topic. What do you think about when you think about jazz music or the Central District or Seattle in the 40s through 60s? These are the objects we'll be exploring today. Our first step is to use our senses to make as many observations as possible. So starting with this piece of paper, when I pick it up, I can feel that it's a little bit thicker than regular printer paper. It's somewhat shiny on the front side and it's nice and flat and white on the back side, so it's not shiny. And then on the front side, we've got black borders with 12 photos on them. So we've got three rows and four columns. And when I look at these pictures, I'm noticing People that look like musicians, they're holding musical instruments and they look like mostly brass instruments. They look like all of the performers are women and they're wearing kind of school uniform outfits. And sometimes there's crowds that are standing in front or around them and maybe they're listening or dancing to music. And when I take a look at this item, I'm noticing that it's hard. It's plastic, um, it's round, and it's got this black plastic with kind of these ridges here, and it's got this kind of bowl, empty plastic circle here, and then there's glass in the middle, and it's kind of curved, so I can see as I move it around that it might make things look bigger, like a magnifying glass, and Oh, yep, I can definitely see a lot of the details in the photo when I look through this object. Now, putting some of these observations together, it seems like these photos were all taken in the same night because they're the same people in different actions. They're wearing the same outfits. Um, and it looks like the person's kind of like moving around the crowd and around the musicians as they perform. Um, it also seems like this magnifying glass is purposefully useful, but I'm not sure why you would print things smaller on purpose though. Um, maybe this is a photo album of some kind. It seems like you're supposed to have this to view these, but I'm not entirely sure why you would print them this small in the first place. Look at that. So our clue looks like a camera and it looks like an old fashioned film camera as well. So that tells me that this is a contact sheet. Um, before digital cameras, images would be made in a camera using what's called film, which is a piece of plastic coated with light sensitive chemicals. And the camera would kind of expose the film to a tiny amount of light 
Um, and then the film is washed with other chemicals in order to reveal and then fix the image onto the plastic. And then in order to print the pictures, photographers would go into a dark room and they would project the image on the film using light, using what's called an enlarger, onto a piece of light sensitive paper, which then is also washed in different chemicals to reveal and then fix the image to the paper. Uh, printing photographs this way takes a lot of time and resources. And so photographers would make what's called a contact sheet that would have many small thumbnails of the different images of a roll of film all on the paper at once. Um, the reason it's called a contact sheet is because you would place the sheet of film directly on top of the light sensitive paper when you were exposing the images um, instead of projecting the image using the enlarger. Um, so this is really cool. Um, this object here is called a loop um, and it's used to view the pictures in further detail so photographers can kind of pick and choose um, which photographs they actually want to spend the time printing. What this tells us about Seattle jazz in the 40s through 50s, um, some of the things that I think it tells us um, is about the musicians and the acts that are performing in these clubs themselves. So the band that we see in here is the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. Um, they were formed from a group of schoolgirls in Mississippi. Um, before they went professional. And so this tells us that the bands that were coming to Seattle were national touring acts, which is pretty neat. Um, we also learn a bit about the photographer's process by looking at the contact sheet, which is really neat. Um, you can see the photographer, Al Smith, kind of moving around the room and making decisions about what he finds interesting or how he's deciding to kind of compose the shots. Um, and we also get a little bit of clues looking at this contact sheet about what the band sounded like. We can see some of the instruments being played. We've got lots of saxophones and tubas and trombones, and we have an upright bass as well. And we also see that there are multiple singers. Um, so this gives us a sense of what it might feel like to listen to this band. I'm still really curious about what other bands performed in Seattle and who came and visited from out of town in order to perform in Seattle. Um, and I'm also really curious to see more of Al Smith's photographs because these um, look really lovely, even though they're really tiny. What are you curious about? You can explore some of your history questions on the Mohai website. That's mohai.org, M-O-H-A-I dot O-R-G. And you can also email us at education at mohai.org to send us topic requests for future Collection Connections videos. Thanks for watching.